Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Holly Schaffner, and I'm a member of the GI Film Festival San Diego Advisory Committee. On behalf of KPBS, our festival organizers, volunteers, and filmmakers, thank you for joining us for Liberation Heroes, The Last Eyewitnesses. With me today is the director of the film, Vanessa Roth. And if you don't know Vanessa, she is an, an Oscar, Emmy, DuPont, Columbia, and Sundance award-winning nonfiction filmmaker. So thank you, Vanessa, for being with us today. Thank you. I'm so glad I can do this. Well, what, a, what an amazing film that uh, that was that we just all saw. And uh, I can't even imagine what your thoughts were when you were getting ready to, uh, to make this film. So how did it come about? Uh, so I was approached by June Beeler and Andy Friendly, who are the producers of the film. Um, June had been the executive director of the USC Shoah Foundation, um, which has collected all of these testimonies from survivors and liberators from the Holocaust and other genocides around the world. And they came to me and said they really want to make a film about the liberators. There's been so many there have been so many things that have been done about the survivors as there should be and but the liberator story was one that hadn't really been told um and they they really wanted to shed light on and we decided really to shed light on the diversity of people that came in and liberated the camps um you know it, it was it, it there were soldiers there were nurses there were men there were women there were you know every race and culture from this country and from around the world that liberated the camps which hadn't really been looked into so um that's sort of what came, what how it started they had come to me um to try to also tell a story that bridges the past with the present to tell some lessons of that time uh that maybe we can connect to today wow that's amazing and um, I know you have a personal connection to the story as well. Can you share with us a little bit about maybe what your motivation was or what your personal connection was to the film? Yeah, I, um, I'm always really drawn to doing stories about memory and legacy. Um, and I, I sort of on a personal side, I grew up actually in San Diego um, in Del Mar. Um, and my mom is a, was an archeologist and an anthropologist and worked in Old Town. Um, and I sort of grew up with this sense of history being alive and history being something that we need to know and hold on to in order to live today and my mom always made it very personal she'd come home with artifacts and all kinds of things and tell me about the people that they imagined used all of these things um and she then was uh, one of the first interviewers for the usc shoah foundation when they did interviews in san diego of the holocaust survivors and this was in the 90 mid 90s um, so she did these interviews and would come home and tell me all about the people she was meeting. So when I was approached to do this film now, this many years later, I had the chance to go back into the archives of the USC Shoah Foundation where they have all these interviews. And my mom has since passed away, but I got to see these videos of her doing these interviews, um, you know, years and years ago. It's just really touching and really profound, the sort of full circle that, um, that happened. Um, so that was sort of my my personal connection and my more professional motivation was, like I said before, um, really loving stories that connect the past and the present and really preserve memory and legacy. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, speaking of interviews, so when you're spending all this time with these veterans that are able to to share their stories of uh, what they did during World War II, were you um, were there some stories that particularly stuck out in your mind or did you feel that it was healing for the veterans to be able to just share those stories? Yeah, I think both. Um, something that really stuck with me that we made a point to really make the film about and structured the film this way was the fact that um, I think, at least for me, I think I had heard stories sort of of liberators as these, you know, sort of heroic coming in you know, and just sort of saving the day kind of feeling when really at that time, um, the liber the people who liberated the camps had really no knowledge of what they were about to do and see and what was asked of them and what was going to happen after that. And in fact, you know, people in this country had such limited understanding or knowledge of what was going on there at the time. So we've structured the film in that way too, where as an audience, we're kind of getting the, I mean, obviously we have perspective and know what happened, but, um, 
but the way the film is structured, we, we made it so that we sort of gave information the way that someone who ended up going in liberating camps would have received information and what they knew as they knew it. So that was sort of what got to me about every story was how little they knew every step of the way, all the way until the very moment when they found themselves, you know, where they did. Um, and then another thing um, that just has always struck me about this, this film and the stories that these people have talked to me about is um, after all these years, so many of them, and they talk about this in the film, but so many of them came home and then never shared their stories, never shared their experiences, the trauma, the horror, the fear, the sadness, all the pain. They didn't share that with their families or even their spouses or partners um, for years, decades, decades and decades, um, because they thought that no one would be interested, you know, and um, and every one of them said to me, and then when they started telling their story, it released something in them, this just this healing thing for them. And I think for the generations below them that they share the story with, it's also, you know, really healing and just gives so much more perspective of that person's humanity. Um, and I, this is going a little bit on a tangent, but part the reason we also include the younger people in the film, um, the cadets that are in the film now, was because I always feel like when we hear stories of war, especially World War II, those men and women are obviously, you know, much older now, but when they went, they were 18, 19, 20 years old, they're young people. So I think sometimes we hear these stories and we see the older person and we can't really imagine that that person was young. <laughs> and so having those young people in the film was our hope to kind of make that connection to really understand who we're talking about when we talk about war. Well, I think that you brought up a couple good points there, a um, couple of very interesting points. First of all, I do believe that, you know, it's important to share these stories. And, you know, for as long as any of us have served in the military or, or you know, our history buffs, we still don't know all of these pieces of history. And your story is, is definitely bringing out one of those just you know, incredible, raw and emotional stories from World War II and, and what these young men, and you're right, they were all young men, you know, the ones that were liberating the camps were all young men. You know, we know that they were, um, they had, some of them had lied about their age. And so they might've been 16, 17, 18 years old uh, when they enlisted in the military. And for them to experience, you know, these horrific, scenes and these horrific experiences of liberating these camps. I mean, you did a very good job of relating that back to today's um, cadets who are getting ready to join the military. And that's important. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, and then to, to say too about like Aldine, who was a nurse and, you know, in the film, how she talks about, she just sort of joined with a friend thinking, this is what we do. You know, we'll just join we'll just join as nurses and see what happens. And they had no training or preparation for what, you know, what was there for them. Mm -hmm. So your uh, total film was about 40 minutes, but I'm just sure that it was a whole, met, a whole lot more hours and days of, of filming than the 40 minutes that we got to see. Um, what was it like for you to uh, be the director and be on set and hear these stories day after day? I mean, what kind of mechanisms did you have in place um, in order to, you know, to hear these, some of these graphic stories? That's a good question. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that where I, you know, I, I developed relationships with the people that we were interviewing and spending time with. And I think about, I try really hard when I make a film like this and any film I make that's about such, um, devastating memory um, and trauma is that I hope that by sharing their story, it is like I sort of said before, a little bit of part of that journey of healing and connecting and getting that out. And it's a conversation that we're having. Um, and I just sort of always am rooted in this hope that the sort of greater good of why we're telling the story is not to relive that moment, but it's to pass that moment down so it doesn't happen again. 
Um, and I try to keep that perspective. And, and then we also, you know, there's the film where you see the little bits, but we also, you know, have great conversations. These are great conversationalists, the people that we interviewed, they're wonderful storytellers. And, um, you know, and at this point, like Alan Moskin, he, he goes and tells his story all the time and he tells it to kids and to, you know, you know, professors and memorial halls and huge, you know, big groups of people. And he did it in the film. Um, so he's also just, just a great charismatic person. So we also just had a good time also. Uh -huh. Wow, that's great. And I remember uh, one of the quotes from the film was that um, that the veterans want the newer generation to be an upstander, not a bystander. Yeah. And, uh, and that really stuck with me as well. So that's one of the, you know, the important things for today's generation, you know, the new men and women that are joining the military, um, or e not even in the military, but just our younger generation, I think that that's important for those World War II veterans from our greatest generation to pass along that, you know, little tip of a, you know, advice or, or feedback onto, you know, our, um, our today's generations. Yeah. I mean, I think even again, like when you ask about motivation, my motivation, you know, came from a personal place with my own family and my work motivations, but also everything I do really is geared towards my own kids as well. And I feel like that's always like a message to them to be upstanders i mean for all of us to be that whether we're in you know the service or for any anything that we need to be up, we need to be aware and speak up and speak out and um yeah and that being a bystander that that's not the responsible ethical human thing to do and that we need to stand up for things that are right well, you did a, uh, an excellent job with this film, and we certainly uh, thank you for uh, getting this film out there. What, um, what are some other projects that you're working on? Um, I have, so this film is continuing also to show at festivals, and um, if people are interested in the archive of interviews that the Shoah Foundation has, um, it's just pretty extraordinary. I mean, it is very extraordinary. Um, and that's the USC Shoah Foundation. So you can probably go to the website to see that and see where this is showing more if you know other people that would like to see this film. Um, and then I have a series that's coming out now on Na uh, National Geographic. Um, it's called Impact. And it's about women doing really remarkably profound things in their community around the world. Um, it's starting as a digital short series. So there's one episode, they're short films, like 12 minutes um that's coming out digitally and then it's going to be on national geographic channel um in june um so that's coming out which is great and then i have a film i just did for amazon um, about mary j blige so a very different topic <laughs> that's great i'm sure this is going to be as wonderful as uh, your previous uh, films that you've done so Thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you so much for doing this film. I think that our uh, audience is, you know, gonna feel the same way that this was a story that needed to be told. And, you know, one of the goals of the GI Film Festival is to bridge that military and civilian divide. And I think by you sharing these stories, um, that's what you're doing. So thank you for being with us. Thanks, Holly, thanks for doing this. And I wanna thank uh, all that are involved in making this year's virtual film festival possible, including our advisory committee members, the Film Consortium San Diego, our filmmakers and our festival sponsors and partners, the California Arts Council, Skatina Daniels Communications, National University, Task and Purpose, and the San Diego International Airport Arts Program. We appreciate all of your support and we couldn't do it without you.